Hello and welcome to another video. As you may know, a new version of Zero came out. Version 1.2.0-Beta1. This version has a ton of new features compared to the last one. And I just want to go over them, look at it, um, see what's new, see what has been improved. As you can see, I have just opened up Zero and an older image of mine. And let's just go over the new features. I'm going to try to go over them as much as I can in an order that I would normally process in. So that it is somewhat logical, if you will. Um, the first thing I do after stacking is a background extraction. Um, but of course, that, but nothing has been improved there. Uh, there's no need to, it works fine. But after that, I would do some small bits of noise reduction. So, here this has been improved quite a bit. Uh, you, we first had just the, uh, truth, the truth wavelets transform and some other ways that I, uh, that I used. But they were quite complicated and took quite a bit of time to do well. But now the noise reduction in Serial is quite easy. You just open it and you get this uh, little box. For the first run of noise reduction, I would suggest just using the remove salt pepper noise as it is a basic form of noise that will be re removed. Um, independent channels the, for the color denoising, if you're denoising a color image and you are having artifacts um, without, like there would be a giant patch um, that is just one color for example then independent channels can can uh, give you better results or eliminate this issue. Then we have the secondary denoising algorithms. Um, by default it's off because it, uh, the benefits of the different algorithms is rather small and it just takes a lot more time. Um, but in some cases it can definitely be worth uh, using a second, uh, secondary algorithm. The first one, uh, the uh, VST, um, just use this one if you're, using, uh, if you're trying to process like a single image. On a stack result they will, this, will, this algorithm will give quite weird results and shouldn't be used. Um, but if you're just processing a single image or like two images or a very very low amount of, it, of data then it can be used. Uh, the data adaptive dual domain denoising or dead denoising I think it's called. Um, this is used as a final denoising so if you're completely done with processing then it can be um, quite useful and SOS um, this one's used to make a make denoising an iterative process. So it's going to run through the denoising multiple times, and this can improve results. Um, but I would only they the developers only suggest doing this when you're having artifacts in your background. So for now, I'm going to do no nothing at all, no uh, secondary algorithm. And then we get to the modulation. This is how much denoising you want to apply. Normally 100% or 1% um, isn't very good or isn't, doesn't look very good because it's completely washed out and looks, um, I think someone called it plasticky, <laughs> which I thought, thought was a pretty, good, um, a pretty good description of it. For now I'm going to use 75% and just click apply. As you can see, it has really reduced the noise quite well. After, the, uh, after some noise reduction, I would go to deconvolution. So, image processing and deconvolution. As you can see, it has been completely overhauled. There's a lot more settings to play with. And just in general, it can give quite a bit, bit better results. In this video I won't really go over it too much because I've already created a zipper video about, about the deconvolution tool 
Um, this was when it was still the developer version of Serial though, but it shouldn't really make a difference, it's the same tool. Um, I'll link this video in the top right corner um, so you can... The next thing, big thing I want to talk about is the implementation of Starnet inside of Serial. This is a pretty big thing because now we can remove the stars earlier in the workflow and then process them separately to the rest of the galaxy or to, to your nebulae or from, in my case the galaxy. This can definitely improve your results as uh, you're less likely to over overexpose or to bloat your stars, I should say. Um, if you don't have Starnet installed currently, I've cr also created a video about that. Um, I'll also link that in the top right. Um, it goes over how to uh, the entire installation. Um, but as this is not the point of this video, I'll just go over what's new in um, in the star processing, basically, because it's been completely uh, it's been added. We have the Starnet star removal, the star recomposition tool, the, the desaturation of stars, and the full resynthesis. The Starnet star removal is, quite, is what I'll go over first, because it's on the top of the list. Um, and let's just go over the settings real quick. We have pre stretched linear image. If you haven't stretched your image yet, so it's still in a linear state like this. It's still it's still dark in a dark image. Then always use pre uh, linear image. This will um, stretch it for uh, for stretch the image so that Starnet uh, can detect the stars more easily. The second thing is the recompose stars on completion. Uh, what this will do, it will open up the star recomposite tool and automatically um, add the starless and the star image. Um, this can be very useful if you don't want to do any additional processing of the stars and the galaxy separately and just want to reduce uh, the stars for example. Um, now we have the, these settings on the right, I would not suggest going with these. Um, maybe upscale if you're undersampled by a lot. But in most cases it's not necessary and, and will just increase the time you are um, running Starnet for. The last thing that's been new, even to me, um, well I've been using the developer version so most of the features I'm talking about in this video I've already had tested out. Um, but the apply to sequence, it's new, it's, it's something I've been wanting to try for a long time. I've, I've already um, tried doing it in different ways. Um, I think it's a pretty big thing, especially for comet stacking. Because now we can remove the stars before stacking and thus we don't have these weird uh, trails in our images. Uh, I'll pop up the image uh, of my, my comet... Uh, C2022 ZTF E3 image or E3 something like that. It's pretty big, the green comet at least. Um, I'll pop it up uh, on the screen for you, and as you can see, it has like these bands um, where the stars were. And if we were to remove the stars earlier in the process, we wouldn't have these uh, weird streaks. Now. With our standard star removal done, we can go back into image processing and s have a look at the rest of the thingies. Star recompos composition, uh, you add the starless image on the left and the star image on the right. And then you can stretch the, the stars and the galaxy or nebulae separately. This means you can adjust how your stars are looking. Um, if they are too big, for example, you can stretch them a little bit less than your galaxy or your nebulae. And I think this this is really just um, this really improves the image and sh makes the um, nebulae or galaxy a lot clearer. The next thing on the list is the desaturate stars. Um, when you have removed the stars from the image and you have your star mask and your starless image. 
um, by applying desaturate stars on your star mask um, you can make sure the stars that are clipped are reduced and should no longer be clipped this is useful when you have overexposed your image or you have had a too long of an exposure time um, and this can result in clipped stars so that they are completely white basically and by doing desaturated stars you are removing the uh, clipping of the image of the stars and making them look better again then we have full resynthesis um, if you apply this on your star mask or your um, yeah the star mask uh, your stars will be adjusted using a Gaussian blur and this can fix most problems you might be having with your stars maybe your back uh, maybe your stars are slightly streaked or you may have some slight back focus problems full resynthesis can definitely improve this a lot I use it on almost every image um, and I really just like the way the stars come out of it uh, basically then the next thing I want to talk about was the generalized hyperbolic stretch so as you can see there's now three options of stretching uh, which I think there was before as well but the generalized hyperbolic stretch has been improved a lot you now have a graph here for example and what this generalized hyperbolic stretch does is it gives you a lot more freedom in the way you stretch your image you of course have the standard stretch factor but you also have a local stretch intensity and you have a symmetry point which if you don't know yet you can just create a little box in the background hit the dropper tool and now you have a uh, now you have just a point in the graph that Cyril will use for your for your stretching basically play around with this you'll get a feel for it as you go um, it's definitely quite a powerful tool um, yeah not much more to say about it it's 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 a really nice way of improving your stretch the next thing I want to talk about is the improved pixel math so we're going to image processing pixel math and now what we can do is save our formulas so if for example I always do L plus HA just some random formula I use this a lot I can just click save and now it's in the presets so whenever I need to use it I can just double click it and it will be added um, this is very useful if you need to if you want to speed up your processing a bit um, and another thing that has been added are a couple of new functions uh, one of them being the median uh, this can be used for when you add HA to your uh, RGB images um, I'll create a video about it uh, soon as well um, I used it for the M106 um, result I recently got I'll put it on the screen right now and I think it just looks really 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 neat to have HA in your galaxies the last thing um, it's the live stacking feature if you go over to the top left here start live stacking session and then the results here you can just click start and then it's gonna look for new images getting added into your working directory and then it'll automatically combine them this is very useful if you're if you're in a session you're currently imaging and then you can just start live stacking and you can see the images come in and see a first have a first look at your result basically as you can see there have been a lot of improvements um, and a lot of things and new and things added um, and I think it's pretty incredible if I've missed anything though please let me know in the comments because I am very eager to know everything uh, about this new version um, but that was it in this video I hope you found it useful and I wish you all clear skies